Hello everyone. Welcome to Learning Techniques. This is your host Hemant. So in today's video, we are going to discuss more about a module, how we can write one and how we can reuse it in Terraform. So basically the purpose, what is the purpose of this uh, video blog? So the purpose basically over here is that one should not keep on writing the same code again and again. So understand a system where multiple developers are working. So what will happen if everyone will write its own independent code for the same thing? So that would be a problematic and a chaos situation where someone new who will be joining or someone who has to do a housekeeping will face a lot of issues to understand what is actually deploying the code. So. In order to remediate all that, we can write a root module and we can uh, write a child module to reference that module. So you can create one module, share with your developers and they can reuse that as per their requirements. So just to ease the time and uh, you don't have to look at me writing the code. I have copied the files in a Git cupboard. I'll uh, provide the links for all these documentation in the notes section. So here you can uh, take a main section and a main module that is main.tf and the child module, which will be used for referencing. So first uh, let's quickly uh, put, put a provider section so that we have a relevant provider. Now quickly switch back to our um, putty terminal. So that is a Red Hat 8 node. Now, create a basic path so that those who are not aware, so, uh, you can also refer the old videos. So any file, if you want to be referenced by Terraform, that need to be in with the TF extension. So I prefer writing a separate TF file. You can write a single file for everything, but I prefer writing a separate TF file. Uh, it's my provide a section now just to have this directory initialized and workable. I'm just um, performing a Terraform in it. Now switching back to our code section again. Let's pick the content of our main module. Okay, so direct button direct is initialized. Now you can write anything like main or parent.tf. It's up to you. Now let's quickly understand the code what's trying to for us. So it's just uh, deploying an AWS EC2 instance where EMI uh, is a custom EMI, but the value of that EMI we have already provided. So if any value you do not provide, it will pick a custom value or a default value, basically, my bad. Then instance type that is also a default value is t2.micro. Then your EC2 name, this, the default variable section is blank. So every time you'll run a code, you have to provide one name at a runtime and a key. What key, if, um, when you are deploying an EC2 instance um, through a portal or a um, CLI as well, you need to provide a secret key or a access key by which you will be able to access that machine. So the key would be required. Do remember to change your key name uh, with otherwise you'll face issues while creating the machine or you'll feel the failures. And the last section is just an output variable so that it will print me the IP address, the instance of the public IP of that instance, which we are going to create through the Terraform. So hopefully this quote is clear. You can uh, do a more research around it at a later point. So let's apply that code and see if we see any errors. So I'll put a machine name as test machine. This will be my EC2 name. And uh, now it popped up me with the values, which is going to pr create my machine with. So my resource uh, entitlement, or you can say my resource reference for the AWS instance over here is my EC2. It's not the EC2 name. The name will be different. The instance time is t2.micro. The name is, uh, basically with the name we are creating over the portal. So that is the name and uh, let's provide a yes. It may take few seconds to a minute um, to deploy the code. 
And if we are all lucky, we won't face any errors. So the code took around 43 seconds to deploy a machine for us and the IP of the machine is uh, displayed on the screen, the output IP of the machine. Let's quickly go to the UI to see that uh, if the same machine is being deployed over there. And this is our uh, EC2 console. Okay, we can see one machine with the reference name of test machine is created. Instance type is t2.micro. It's still initializing, so uh, it may take a few more minutes to deploy. And the public IP, you can see it's the same, which we got on the screen. So our main code is working fine. So this parent module worked fine for us. Now quickly destroy that machine um, and try creating a new one. So the command would be um, same, just terraform destroy. Sorry, my bad. The spelling typo gave us this error. So the, it will again ask you the name of the machine which you want to provide. If, even if you give a blank enter, that would be accepted because it will refer the state file, but there's no harm in providing machine name. So let's provide a machine name and it will take a few seconds to destroy it. So it provides us a map what all things it's going to delete. So it's uh, telling you that the EC2 instance, um, the reference name, which is my EC2 is going to be deleted. This name is not popped up anywhere. Neither is the host name of the machine. It's just a reference for the Terraform. So just provide our consent with a yes and it will delete everything. It will also show you which IP it's going to release. Meantime, it's happening. Um, let's quickly um, pick the child module code as well. Also, you can see on the console that it's not shutting down and terminating. So this is fine. Now quickly go to our child module code. Okay, it's destroyed, fine. Now, now let's quickly switch to the second user. I have a, one user created Ansible and uh, now quickly create one directory structure that is um, mkdir temporary. Uh, switch to the directory structure and put our child module. So we can put like child.tf and uh, quickly put our code. Let's try to initialize, um, okay. Before that, let's uh, quickly go through the content of the code. So make it more readable. Okay, so the content over is now we are using a module and this is our module name. It can be anything, it can be your name as well. It's just which child module you are writing to reference your main module. The second thing would be your source path that where you have put your parent module. So I believe my parent module name is different. These two directories below are putting me to a root section and then the temp, whatever relative path you will get, you have to paste the relative path over there. And just, okay, for here as well, I think we have put a name as puppet only. So that's fine. So the absolute path, relative path is fine. Then uh, you can provide all those values which uh, you have provided over there. If you don't want to use the default values, you can provide the, use those variables and provide the, uh, your actual value. So I'm using my custom EMI ID. So even if I don't that use that, it will pick the default value from there. So it would be much easier for your developer. They only have to use a module uh, with a source path and only provide a name in this example of ours. Obviously you will be a bit different from mine. And uh, at a later point, you can also uh, output the new IP, which you will get. So. The colleague method would be a bit different. This time you have to use with a module and the, your child module name and actually what value you are picking from the parent module. So over there, the output value is like AWS IP. So just put it over here and it's going to use it. Now let's see if Terraform apply would work for us. Oh, my bad, because the module is still not installed. So, Let's do a Terraform init and okay, it is not able to read um, the temp path. So let's quickly see 
it's um, there or not. Okay, our uh, structure is there. Uh, let's just quickly, uh, let me make the, probably a relative path is a bit wrong. Okay, so obviously this path is um, heading us to the relative path. So by the looks, I only have to add one more path over there. And after that, we should be good. Okay, so it's initializing now. You can see in the output that it's initializing the EC2 module, the child module, which you have written, and it will take the source from the parent module. It may take a few minutes to, um, to pick. Now you can see that uh, it has created some directory structure. You can also see that it usually downloads the things for us. So in the Terraform directory, you will find a lot of things like uh, even the complete path of your, or the code which you are writing. So if you see this module.json, this should contain a lot. Oh, sorry, my bad. So, yeah, it's a key values of whatever you are providing over here. So now quickly move to, okay, so now we are here with our code. So let's try to apply this code and see um, if we got any errors. Now it, uh, so if you remember, we only put the key value in the child, nothing else, not even the resource which we are going to use. So it's picking all that values from the parent module. Now provide a value. Um, you can provide like child server. And if everything goes fine, it will fix. So what's the error now? Okay, uh, it's having some issues with the credentials because obviously it's not able to um, read and speak to the credentials. So let me quickly see what credentials we have put over here. Are any credentials there or not? Mm, it appeared to me that there are not no credentials for this user. Okay, um, just let me quickly put a credential file over there. Okay, I pasted the credential file um, as per my temporary credentials or the token values from the um, my AWS console. And let's see, do we still get the errors or is it fine? So yes, this time it worked fine. So it used the credentials. Now um, you can see the same things. Uh, the main module that has been referenced is um, this module, the child module, then what resource it's going to read and what's the reference of that resource. Then accordingly, it will take a name uh, which you provide on the user input time and all other values which you provide as a default or as uh, user input as per requirement. Now provide a yes to that. So now it started creating. So we can clearly see it created an IP for us. The machine, new machine is created for us. Uh, let's quickly jump to our AWS console and see um, if that is still uh, visible to us. So just do a refresh. Our old machine is terminated and the new machine is created over here. And the IP address is same. Um, now just quickly, uh, check some things like the security key. So I'm using, not the security key, just a second. It's a default security group. You can provide your security group as well. It's still initializing, so it may take a few minutes. So, Bob. Let's see if we can quickly um, jump to the putty session. Okay, so with this IP, we can successfully create to our putty session. So that's basically, uh, overall introduction and uh, 
whatever testing we have done from our end, I'll share this link to you guys and the GitHub code link as well. Please do test, uh, let me know. You can also enhance the code and share your inputs so that uh, it's just uh, starting through that how you can create the parent module and you can use a child module. You can complicate these examples and uh, let them suit your requirement. So thanks for being such a nice audience. Um, stay tuned. Thank you very much.